<laughs> hey there, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Revolutionary Health. Um, Revolutionary Health is a program of the Counter Narrative Project, and we are right here most Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Um, if you are watching us right now, you can follow the Counter Narrative Project. So make sure that you hit the like button so that you can stay in contact with us. You should also, yes, encounter the narrative indeed. You should follow our YouTube page and make sure that you subscribe so you can see um, episodes of Revolutionary Health. On Instagram, we are at The Counter Narrative. And on Twitter, we are at Building Desire. Mm -hmm. So I am so grateful. I have two guests. So I have our host, Dr. Malbranch, with me, and we have some guests. So we're going to start here um, with you. Can introduce yourself, please. Hey, everybody. Uh, David Malbranch, resident physician, activist, all around badass back on Revolutionary Health with Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm the original Mustang. Um, I am a entertainer by night, personal trainer by day. Wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us. No problem. Um, happy to have Mr. Mustang here because we're going to talk about a topic that has been coming up a lot. One of the things I want to note, though, because I see people are joining. Thank you all so much. Um, so what's happening, uh, Jay Bernard, what's happening, Dravon and Rodney. And, you know, so thank you so much for joining us. If you have questions, please make sure that you put them in the chat window and we will do our best to get to the questions as we go through the conversation. So. Last week, I guess it was like a week and a half ago, right? Um, social media went crazy because um, Tumblr announced that as of December 17th, they would be removing adult content oh, wow. from their platform. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, um, and what we realize is that uh, so many of so many of us mm -hmm. utilize Tumblr for our adult entertainment, our pornographic content, etc. So, okay, my first thing, this is full disclosure. Okay. I wasn't into some This is a safe space. <laughs> this, this is a, a safe a, space. It's a no judgment zone. I'm <laughs> right? just letting you know. I wasn't, Tumblr wasn't my thing to um, consume adult content. Right. Um, but I, I recognized the importance of what it did, right? Absolutely. Um, so we will talk through, um, so I wanted to just talk about Tumblr for a minute. So if y'all could jump in and talk about how you at all use Tumblr, um, if at all, in personal life or however. So honestly, I don't use Tumblr. Okay. Um, so the information that uh, was presented today was uh, slightly new, mm -hmm. but um, I agree with the band. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna dig into why, I'm curious. So we definitely right. gonna get into that. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't I don't use Tumblr either. And I mean I would have oh, three of us. So we got right. three motherfuckers. Nobody <laughs> uses Tumblr on the show about Tumblr. But I don't, you know, when I looked at it, you know, most of the stuff for porn that I would use would be with my Vidster or X2 or Pornhub porn or stuff like that. Yeah, those yeah. are the ones people would send me stuff from um Tumblr, but I just wouldn't use it. So mm -hmm. it was one of those things where it was like I didn't really know what they were linking me to, but yeah. I saw some of the sites. I saw that people would have their personalities and stuff like that up. So I understood that a lot of people used it. So people were up in arms when they found out. Like yeah. they, people were really upset. Like, where am I going to get my porn from? Which I right, thought was right. pretty interesting. Yeah. Um, um, and so here's the, the what we know about, um, or at least I'm going to go from personal experience. Okay. So for me, um, I know that. Uh, porn is important to like my health, right? <laughs> In the sense that um, it's the opportunity for me to kind of be with, you know, with my desires, be with my thoughts, Your that fantasies. sort of thing, my fantasies, yeah. that sort of thing. Um, so I know that for a lot of people, Tumblr provided that. an opportunity for them to explore that. Right. right. Um, so you indicated that the ban from your perspective was something that you would agree with. I'm curious to know Absolutely. what your thoughts are. So to be quite honest, um, nowadays porn is so accessible mm. that um, it's not appreciated like it was back in the day. Mm. Um, people do a, a video store or a porn store or you know, actually purchase it from the site in general mm -hmm. um, in order to even look at porn. Um, nowadays, there are so many different free sites, so you can go and you can get those things. And then information begins to be exposed on some of those sites. Um, that's kind of unnecessary due to 
us all going to publicly view it. Mm -hmm. right. You know, so um, yeah, I agree with the band. I mm -hmm. think that um, there is a time and a place for everything, but I also think that certain sites should not actually promote uh, sexual videos or, mm -hmm. you know, pornographic mm -hmm. stuff. You know, I just think that certain sites should be prohibited for that. Everything is, shouldn't be a porn site. And nowadays mm -hmm. when I get on social media, sure. everything is porn from Facebook, yeah. private rooms, Twitter, uh, Twitter yeah. you know, Tumblr, everything is a porn site. Right? Interesting. So if you didn't use Tumblr, like where would you get, where would you watch porn for you? Cause you're, you're in the entertainment field. So mm -hmm. like, what would you, people would be like, oh, it's Mustang. Like, <clears throat> where does he go? Right. Well, my Vista is my best friend. Okay. okay. And that's a lot of that's, people. That's a lot of us. Yeah, that's one of my like favorite that. um sites. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much okay. so Tumblr wasn't it, right? Yeah, no, Tumblr wasn't it. And also Pornhub. 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 I'm Pornhub. a huge fan of that as well. Um, so we actually have some comments. Some comments that have come in. Um Jay Bernard um, said the reason why Tumblr, like so many services, are banning porn was because of the child porn laws known as SESTA and FOSTA. That is absolutely true. Thank you, Bernard. Jay Bernard. Thank you so much for bringing that um, into the conversation. And of course, Rodney said hello. Hey, Rodney. Hey, Rodney. And Art said peace. Up, thank bro? you. Listen. And so, okay. So here's what we know to your point that you just made. Enoch just said, listen. Tumblr might be closing, but Twitter is still open. <laughs> right, that part. So, <laughs> right. so there is this thing of there are always places to go, but I think that brings to, right to your point mm -hmm. is that because we have so much access, like it's readily accessible in so many places and isn't always as appreciated. Right, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. Now in the entertainment field, like when, when you started, um, did you... Like if you did, if you were stripping or if you did any other kind of exotic entertainment, whether it be porn or anything else, was what was the difference of back then? Because you said that people would access this, but like someone who was like in the industry and saw what was going on. Have you seen a lot of change? Because I remember the day when like Coco Dorm was right. like big and we would see, and especially when we're talking about black gay men, like you had a lot of white gay men mm -hmm. or even white straight men probably that were kind of running these things right. and exploiting these young brothers that were in there that didn't know any better, giving them kind of pennies and nickels, right. and then making thousands of dollars off it. Like, how has it changed from like 10 years ago up mm -hmm. until now in your eyes? Um, to be honest, it hasn't. It's gotten worse. Wow. So, um, just because uh, the same thing that was happening back then, even with Coco Dorm or those different sites, um, porn companies now, and I'm not trying to expose anything about anybody, you know, but in general, um, I've even been presented with nickels, dimes, and pennies. Notice I said presented. Right? Mm -hmm. However, um, sometimes people think that easy fame is, oh, let me do a porn video and I'll be famous. I'll blow up overnight. Right. Mm -hmm. But if it's not, um, mm -hmm. I, I don't think if it's beneficial, then it doesn't make sense. Right. And so my thing is I wouldn't do I wouldn't do a porn video for three, four, five, six hundred dollars. I think that's ludicrous. Right. And so when people are making thousand dollars off. You know what I'm saying? Offer you. And nowadays, it's even less. It's dropped from 400 to 300. I've even heard people getting paid $200 for a porn video, and I think it's absolutely insane. Mm, right. Wow. Yeah, and it's interesting because I see even on X2, like I see, and I used to go on X2 because I would see the people that would be the amateur. Like the amateurs were my favorite because mm -hmm. they were real, they were kind of right. natural, right. they weren't glossed up a lot. So I would watch those, and those would be the ones that I, I had more interest in. But then I noticed that they'd have these people that were almost like, um, professionals or they have and they charge they would right. so you can you can do a video and so there'll be a theme like someone will do glory hole videos mm -hmm. or someone do anonymous sex action right and they'll charge like 10 to 15 dollars right to buy and download the video and then rent it for like five dollars and i started to do the math because mm -hmm. i was seeing that like some of these people were like having like five thousand six hundred thousand views yeah. and i was thinking to myself five thousand or six thousand views times mm -hmm. Five dollars times ten, fifteen dollars. Yeah. That ends up being a lot of money at the end of the day. It does. Mm -hmm. so a lot more than porn companies were offering. And so now they have this 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 particular site um, that's popping now. I'm sure you've heard of it called OnlyFans or whatever. Oh yes, yes, yes. And, yes. and so people now are like, okay, instead of doing porn, I do my own thing, and then I just charge people to subscribe per month. And if I get a hundred subscribers at five dollars a month, that's five thousand dollars. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, do other uh, people in the entertainment field were they using Tumblr a lot, or do they use the kind of private rooms like you're talking about? Because I know they do that so, in Instagram. So I've heard of Tumblr being used a lot. Um, I've even heard that I was on Tumblr and didn't mm -hmm. know it. 
Uh -huh. um, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't aware yeah, of it. Yeah. So, I mean, I've heard Tumblr, 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 but it's right. not something that I was accessing. Right. Personally, right. Um, can we talk for a second? Because I know that there are, so we talked about alternatives, right? right? Things that will kind of come behind and other ways that people can access the material. But you mentioned something interesting. So you, you talked about OnlyFans. Can you talk a little bit about, um, or I want to have some dialogue about, um, I, I imagine these sites offer more control for the performer because like you can start your own OnlyFans. Right. Um, and that's a, that's a, that can be a positive for folks. And a negative as well. Ah, saying. talk to us about that. So my, my thing is everything isn't for everybody. Mm -hmm. And that's not to downplay anyone who wants to live out their dream. But I think more than likely you have to do things to that you have a passion for doing. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, I don't think it's about passion. It's more so about a come up or about making mm. extra money. So instead of people working hard or wanting to find a job or doing something else, oh, I can go have sex and make a video and right. then I'll get a paycheck. Mm -hmm. and this is how I'm going to make my living. I'll just escort, which is basically what it's pretty much called, like self escorting. Right. Okay. You know, so I'll do a porn video and then I'll reap the benefits from it. But it's just like at the end of the day, after you do this and your face is out. Right. Then uh, what do you have left? Because if you had a career or if you wanted to pursue a career, right. those things in, 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 in the future could actually hurt you. And a lot of people say that it can't, but it can. I'm a right. witness that it can. Right. Wow. OK. How so? Um, for many different reasons. You may decide to do something in TV or law or anything like that. Right. And somebody can say, oh, well, this is that person. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you have a person that has a very clear record mm -hmm. or who hasn't done anything of that sort. Right. Nine times out of 10, even if you are qualified, they're going to choose the person that does not have a background. Does not have that background. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I almost think that you were mentioning about like people getting the quick kind of come up. And I also think it's it may be a generational thing because I think in this like in this day and age we're all talking about like everyone wants their fifteen minutes of fame like immediately mm -hmm. and so it may be about the quick cash grab but then mm -hmm. also you get all this attention you get all these likes you get all these followers and mm -hmm. people are like oh my god I'm popular now yeah. and then that may last and folks aren't thinking about the repercussions for later on and so I think there's part of it with that as well and and also even with that popularity brings some sort of uh, a package that you may not want to deal with because you have the good to that, that people may like you, mm -hmm. people may, you know what I'm saying, find you attractive, they may like your work, right. but then other people won't take you seriously. There's a side of you that people do not know. The only thing they judge is what they see. Mm -hmm. So after you put your sexual life out there, mm -hmm. you know, people feel like they know you personally based on what you've done. And actually that's not who you are. Wow. How, hard, how hard is that for you? Oh like dealing God. with it, because I, I imagine that shit happens like almost every day. Oh my God, I've been, I've been called all kind of horror sluts. Um, all type of things. People get mad because, oh, well, they send me a new picture and I don't reply. Oh, but well, you're mm -hmm. a fucking porn star. I mean, oh, OK, wow. whatever. Well, my thing is, that's not what interests me. So if right. you want to grab my attention, I would much rather have a regular conversation than you sending me news or you sending me pictures of your dick and your ass just right. because I did porn. So you think that's what I'm interested in because I did a porn video. Right. You don't know the reasons why I did a porn video. So to approach me in that manner just makes me be like, OK, yeah. I don't want to be bothered. I'm not going to mm. be rude, but I just won't entertain. Right. I think there is, and what we're kind of, and there are several comments that I do want to get to. Okay. You know what? In fact, let me go here first because um, I do want to grab some of these. So Jay Menard said the economy, the uh, the economics of the pay drops is related directly to the, the ubiquity of the Uber porn industry, right. like Connect Pal just for fans and OnlyFans. So Absolutely. it's partially right. a response to increased economic pressures of so many new models and so many new alternatives. Right. Thank you so much for that. And we were speaking to that as well. Um, um, Enoch said, there is more interest in free amateur porn for consumers like myself than staged content. Um, I somewhat believe the porn production companies might have something to do with some of these sites blocking access. Hmm. Mm. I'm open to what y'all think about that. Mm. Interesting. Mm. Um, so because they're losing money, they're kind of making sure that people can't access it through Tumblr. Tumblr. And we could probably expect that like Twitter will come next. We know Facebook like blocks folks if Absolutely. they just put like something that even is not even risque, they'll block you. But, yeah. but, but that's to a degree. Right. Because mm -hmm. you, you also have different chats or groups that are on Facebook and there's nothing but porn there. There's right, nothing they're but pornography right. or yeah. whatever the case may be, but they're still open to a public site. Mm, right. Good point. 
Um, so I want to I want to talk about um, the health aspect of of um, of this because I think one of the things when we think about uh, Tumblr, when we think about um, pornography, there is I know that for me personally, there is the relaxation of just being able to be with my with my fantasies, right? right. And I want to talk about that for a while. I want to talk about you know, and I want to ask folks for those of you who are watching, why do you um, why do you or do you access porn, and the reason why you do it? Because I know for me, it's you know, I get a chance to be with myself. Yeah, and I think there's an important part of it. And I think what a lot of people do, they always put the negative on it. So right. just like Mustang was saying, with you know, people like automatically judging somebody because they right. they kind of misconstrue and think that you are what the what service the, you're providing right. at that moment. So Absolutely. if you're stripping or if you're performing in a movie, that's who you are. That's right. the totality of your being. And I think the same thing happens like with porn. A lot of people will say, you know, it, it, it gets laden with a lot of shit because if you look at black gay men, you look at things like HIV and uh, videos where it's always going to be raw, like greet it raw, those kind mm -hmm. of things that actually people will pay more for because so they want to see condomless sex. I think there's the, the tendency for society to look at it and be like, oh, this shit is all bad. Right. And the way I look at it is if we're looking at it from a health perspective, like I've heard couples say to me, like, I watched this porn video and they do it with strippers too. So they'll say, right. I went and I went to a strip show yeah. and man, I got so hot and bothered when I got home. You know, I went and me and my wife or me and my dude, we had sex. We had the best sex we've had in a long time. And the same thing can be said for porn. Like some people say, well, I, I saw this in a porn video and I thought, hey, maybe that may turn my partner right. on. And so right. that's that. So like as a consumer, as part of the industry, right. what are your thoughts about that? Like as far as from a health perspective, like what it can provide to folks. And do you hear people talking about that angle? So, 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 I mean, to be honest, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, um, health situations are real. Right. Mm -hmm. Let's just be clear about that. Right. Uh, as it relates to porn, I mean, just because it's done on screen or on camera does not mean that it doesn't take place off screen and off camera. Right. Mm -hmm. And so at the end of the day, you you like or you view those things that you would participate in mm -hmm. um, off camera. If you want to watch protected sex, then you go and watch protected sex. Right. Mm -hmm. That may be something that you may be interested in. Right. And then you could also still be interested in protected sex, but like watching raw sex. You may not have a partner. You may not mm -hmm. be with somebody. Right. And you may like to do raw things, but just because you don't have that person that you'll do it with, you'll just go on and watch we'll a raw that. porn site. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's basically left up to what type of person you are. But to actually go and do um, what I, I would call damage control and right. downplay the people who chose to do those mm. things, they had enough balls to do it, number one. But number two, and then they, if you don't like it or you don't want to watch it, just move on to something else, mm. something right. else that turns you on. Because we all watch porn for the same reasons, right. mm. pretty much to get off. Right, yeah. right. And everybody has the different fantasies or different fetishes right. and what they're into. Absolutely. Right. Turns them on, yeah. Have you, um, cause I think Dave, you know, David, you mentioned something and I'm curious to know, cause I know that you know, in relationship, there have been those times where you're like, oh, that was really interesting. Maybe that's something I could try. Right. Have you actually talked to people that said, hey, your work helped me or Abs helps me? Absolutely. All the time. Wow. Yeah. Oh, my God. You helped me get through last night. You made my, <laughs> right. you, you, you made my morning. Right. I, I have all your videos. I want to thank you. Right. I have all your videos downloaded on my phone. You know, right. so, so many different things people say you know and um i'm humbled at all of it you know i've heard negative right. and positive things and right. you know either or i'm just receptive yeah yeah I, I think one of the other things i want to say is that i do think when it comes to like people watching raw porn and porn with folks it's advertised people ain't gonna be using condoms for this i think also too like some of us may look at it as a protective thing like hey this is my fantasy because again we have to remember we have to like couch or take the negativity out of it Sex without a condom is actually natural sex. Absolutely. And yes. so it's you have to train your body to put on a condom or to use a condom. And it means a lot more than just having sex without a condom. For a lot of people, it's about connectedness. Yes. When we talk about black gay men, there's a lot of stuff that's happening that's marginalizing us in different aspects. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, people can pathologize it all they want, but you can strip it all down and just look at it, the basic connection and how you feel connected with somebody is not by putting a piece of rubber mm -hmm. over a certain part of your body. Now, if somebody is scared and says, okay, the reality is there's a lot of shit out there that I can get. How, how can I, turn, why are people keep knocking over there? So how can I actually, how can I actually go about this and live this fantasy without putting myself at risk? That's where I look at it. Like what's wrong with them? watching those videos mm -hmm. 
if that helps them from not doing that themselves. Cause they're like, you know what? I want to do this, but I want to wait till I'm with somebody. We both get tested. We both find out we're negative with all this stuff. And then we'll go from there or if we're positive, they're on meds. Um, I'm on prep, whatever I want to do. But right, I think right, right. giving people the agency to do whatever the fuck they want instead of like saying, well, OK, you have to do it like this or it's negative if you do it like this. I think there are health implications and it has to be more beyond, well, these folks are just having sex without condoms. So it's bad. And it teaches people to go out and have sex without condoms. I don't think that's necessarily so, the so, case. So that that depends on the loyalty of a person to whatever relationship you have with that person. Right. Uh, you know, at the end of the day. I, I can speak for myself. I can't really speak for anybody else. But if you make yourself accessible more than what people have saw, mm -hmm. then that's where the the common factor is like, okay, well, I know what this person is doing. Because if you read the comments, mm -hmm. if you read the dialogue of what people are saying about right. porn stars or whatever the case may be, oh, right. yeah, this person lives in Atlanta. They live in New York. I've had sex with them. I've had sex with that. Mm -hmm. And so it, it begins to build a negative resume mm -hmm. as it relates to, you know, okay, well, I know that this person they're not careful or I know this person is very right not cautious or they'll do anything they'll, they'll be reckless or right. they may have burned me before they may have gave me an STD right you know and um th that's a lot of things that people are scared to talk about but when it's lived out on video right and you're also connected to that person then a lot of people have things to say about that because they've been involved right just right. not on and I think you know you strip it all down and even when you said like the city like I can't tell you how many times when I say I'm in Atlanta Oh, so that's where all the whores are. And I was like, what is wrong with we you? We have like, to change I'm sorry, that, like yeah. DC, Baltimore, New York City, everywhere. California, but like no, everywhere it's you every, live, it's every wrong, city. But for some reason, just because there's more numbers of us, people think that like it's this free for all. And yes, people are having the sex, and yes, people and, are enjoying themselves. But it's no different than any Anywhere. other city in that respect. No, there's just more of us out there. That's yeah. all. I want to grab um, a couple comments. Um, thank you so much for this, um, Enoch. People watch porn more than we think. Um, they just aren't honest about it Amen. when it comes to open communication. Sex and honesty is um, like mixing butter with water. Um, thank wow. you so much for that. <laughs> right. Um, let me see. So um, Rodney mentioned there's an alternative to Tumblr on the way called crumbler.com. Has anybody else heard of crumbler? <laughs> I haven't heard? heard about it. Wait, and I'm we'll like, only contain right, adult I'll be, I'll content. Be so, I'll be so sleep on these. Right. right. I'll, I'll <laughs> you, like, like, you don't know. Right. <laughs> right. Um, Okay, so um, let me see. So Bernard, um, this is a comment. America is um, publicly uh, uh, puritanical, but privately slutty. Right. Um, we want to <laughs> act all self-righteous in the open right. while we are secretly watching porn. Right. We all want a sexual connection, but unfortunately, I think that most aren't enjoying the sex life that we want. Porn satisfies our unrealized needs. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that that's true. Wow. That speaks to it. Thank that's you. Bernard. Thank you so much, um, Bernard. One of the other things I do remember, and of course, like the work that I do in around research and sex and sexual health, the area of the country that watches the most porn is what? What would you think? Oh, I have no idea. Like the Northeast, the Southeast, the, the West, the Midwest? Midwest. Oh hell no! It's the southeast. I, I was just about to say. And so it's the Bible. It's the Bible Belt Bell that watches that consumes the most wow. porn, and there are documented studies that check that out. And mm -hmm. so when you see those kind of things, you realize like you're in the Bible Belt. We're a very yeah. repressed culture when you compare us to say Europe and Paris and yeah. Denmark and Amsterdam, the yeah. Netherlands. You compare us to all these other countries. We're really yeah. repressed. But the funny thing is that we keep it on the outside like we're repressed. Right. But everyone's getting their freak on on the inside. Absolutely. Right. Um, right. And they're ashamed to kind of admit that because we live in a culture where hypocrisy and just telling a lie and having it become truth has become the norm. <laughs> And, and and we also live in a, a a a era where a lot of people like to throw Bible here, Bible there, right. and oh, okay, well. Technically, the Bible says that this lifestyle is wrong, but the Bible is so contradictory. It says so many different things. Yes. Um, you have the Old Testament, you have the New Testament. But one thing that I can agree that it does say, it says, so as a man, thank you. So is he. So if you're thinking about these fantasies that you're sitting here watching, right. you, you might as well just do you live your best life. Right. Mm. Right. Can I, um, I want to grab a couple more comments and yeah. then I want to grab some um, some thoughts because I know a lot of things have come out of this dialogue, not just about Tumblr, but really about our ability to um, do, like to live in our truths. Right, right, um, right. So Maurice, um, uh, 
mentions that people talk about porn in either or binary ways. Porn is both helpful and harmful. Mm -hmm. I think we sex positive people don't talk about the harm because we don't want to deal with how it may be culpable in creating marketplaces of desire that marginalize others or allows some to. I think that is true. Very well said. Um, thank you so much for that, um, Maurice. So go ahead. I, I will say something. I was giving a lecture to some um, medical residents at Grady Hospital today about taking a sexual history and screening for HIV and STIs. And, you know, the CDC, and if people have heard me speak before, will hear me talk about this. They talk about when medical providers are taking sexual history, they have something called the five P's. And it's like mm -hmm. partners, practices, protection, pregnancy, and something else. And the funny thing is, is that the one P that's not in there when we take a sexual mm -hmm. history is the P that stands for pleasure. Mm -hmm. And so it's almost like we've been so socialized to think that like, wow. oh, sex is all negative or it's all about preventing pregnancy or limiting the number of partners or protecting yourself or doing this, that, and the other, that we forget that the primary purpose of sex is for pleasure. pleasure. And so at the end of the day, however you get it, however you access it, mm -hmm. however you provide it as a service mm -hmm. to people, mm -hmm. because I don't think people realize that part of the industry is right. like, this is a fantasy. Like you're providing a fantasy, fantasy to people. Right. Do people realize that or they just kind of caught up in other shit that they can't really think, see? I think that. they're just caught up in other shit. But I mean, you know, pornography, like many other things, is still an acting thing. Mm -hmm. However, sometimes we become so consumed in what we act, we just become that person. Mm -hmm. And so you have to be able to decipher between what's real and what's not. Right. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people have gotten caught up into, okay, well, I see this porn and I see people like in the same videos. There's so many of the same people. Right. So this is like really what they want to do every day, all day long, because this is all that they do. And that is a clear... Uh, there's clear understanding of discernment. Like right. you can just discern it. Right. If you see me in a porn video every week, okay, this is more than acting for him. This is something that he really likes to fucking do. Right, mm -hmm. right, 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 right. Mm -hmm. right. Excellent. You know? um, I want to have uh, some quick final comments. We have a couple of, we, yeah, actually these are some responses um, that are coming through. Thank you all so much for, yeah, for being comments. in the comments and actually dialoguing with each other. These are actually, thank you all so much for doing that because I think so much of, so what's happening right now in the chat as people are watching is there's some um, dialogue that are happening where brothers are actually having conversations with each other about right. comments that are coming up. And I think part of this dialogue and talking about this Tumblr ban is for us to once again lift the veil on revolutionary health about all the different ways that um, our health, this is all part of our health. Right. Like, um, how Tumblr, how people use Tumblr is part of someone's everyday right, health, right. how people consume um, pornography and, and, and entertainment and however they choose as part of our health right. and how we participate in that is in, in the work is also part of our health. Right. Too. Yeah. And I think, you know, from a, from a health perspective, like there are a lot, of, I just don't think the medical community understands it as much. We know that like hormones and nerves and neurotransmitters and blood vessels all work to like, make this potent mix when you see something that you're attracted to and it goes right up until you come mm -hmm. so once you come all of a sudden and if you notice like just in general life when you come your mind is clear again. yeah it's like a strange thing like you weren't thinking straight you were like i'm gonna travel 100 miles to meet so and so and i'm gonna drive at three o'clock in the morning to go see this and then all of a sudden you masturbate and you watch some porn and then you come and then you're like oh I don't really need to do that anymore. And so I think there's like a physiology to it with the health perspective that we don't quite understand. But I know everybody uses it to help with when you can't sleep. It helps you sleep. Stress. When you're stressed out. And you know, you, like if you have right. to do a presentation or do something, you're stressed out. Right. If you bust a good one off, all of a sudden you're like, you know what? I'm good. Like yeah. I can handle this now. You right. almost feel like you can conquer the world at some point. So right. There is something to it. And actually, to be honest with you, Many urologists will say, and there are studies on this, that the more you actually ejaculate and you come, mm -hmm. the the more clean your urethra is going to be, like the tube of your penis. It's actually a natural flushing out mechanism. Huh. So they tell people all the time, like, masturbation is good for you because it's your body's way of kind of clean, cleaning the pipes, oh, so I to speak. And so you can do that. So whether you're actually physically having sex or whether you're masturbating, but it goes against societal norms where mm -hmm. we say you're not supposed to masturbate, mm -hmm. your hand... Um, You'll get this, that, and the other. I remember a while ago, 10 years ago, so I dated a brother who didn't like masturbating. Mm -hmm. And I remember I didn't understand, and he would always say, and I remember before we broke up, we dated for a few months, 
And I remember I came home one time and I was upset about something. My back was bothering me. I was going through some 40 year old shit. I don't know what it was, but <laughs> what happened was he was like, oh, babe, can you hook me up? And I said, what are you talking about? And he saw me kind of hobbling around. He was like, can you hook me up? Like, we need to have sex. And I was like, dude, you see me. I can't even walk right. from one side of the room to the other. How the fuck am I going to hook you up? I can't hook myself up. I found out later he was talking with a friend of his and I was too close because we were dating. Mm -hmm. But a friend of his had kind of unpacked why he didn't like to masturbate. Mm -hmm. And it had a lot to do with how he was raised. Mm -hmm. And he admitted like, yeah, I, I was raised under, you know, with religious parents. And they told me that this was bad. He was like, and I didn't think about it. Mm -hmm. I think subconsciously it made me go into my adulthood thinking I shouldn't be masturbating. Wow. They impacted like relationships, how he had intimacy with mm -hmm. his sexual partners. And then somebody gave him, um, I think the off the hook videos from mm -hmm. back in the day. Oh, remember I remember the off the, the hook those. videos from yeah. New York with all the black and Latino brothers. Yeah. And he said, he busted like three nuts on that one. Mm -hmm. And he was like, what was I missing? Like, right. he was really like, he was like, I just, cause I think he also said that he had seen like a lot of white guys in porn videos. Mm -hmm. and he didn't realize that there was a lot of black and Latin porn out there that he would be more interested in, that turned him mm -hmm. on more. So right. again, it's about access and kind of what you know and if it's available out there to you, but if you don't know what's not out there, you won't be able to utilize right. it. Right, right, right. Can I ask a, I'm gonna ask a doctor question, Dave, <laughs> really quick. So you you mentioned um, about the urethra being um, cleaned out. Yeah. One of the things that happens um, after ejaculation in my case right. is I have the in the urge to urinate. Right. What cause like is that good? Yeah, I think it's it has to do with a couple of the the nervous systems. Okay. There's like the parasympathetic nervous system, which kind of calms things down, and then the sympathetic nervous system, which is like your fight or flight. Okay. So when you see a bear and you start to run, it kind of shunts all your blood to your vital organs, so you can either prepare to fight or you can run. Okay. And so when that's not happening. Um, it ends up quieting down. They, they mentioned what's called the parasympathetic system is like where you're reading a book, you're relaxing, you're having a cup of tea and you're reading a porn novel. So your dick gets hard. Yeah. And so that's all part of that nervous system. Got and I it. think after it's not with everybody, but I've heard that before. Like mm -hmm. after you come, like people are ready to urinate, but I yeah. think it's all part of that same tube and the same valves yeah. that open up and close up are going to open up at some point. And so they'll allow you to kind of pee at the same time. But it's like also the reason why you're hard and sometimes you got to pee. Right. You can't do it. So yeah. it, ha it happens like that sometimes. Wow. OK, that was that was thank you so much for doing that. Um, That's not all of it. I'm yeah. like trying to break it down. <laughs> I know I was like throwing a lot of parasympathetic and sympathetic. No, that was childhood. fancy. I was like parasympathetic. This is great. Yeah, so I right, ask right, that right, question. Right, right. Um, Mr. Mustang, thank you so much no for coming in to join us tonight. And um, as always, thank all of you. There is such rich dialogue Going that on. is happening in the chat that I want us to be able to continue having these conversations, right? Um, and continue having this dialogue. Um, this is all part of our help. Yeah, absolutely. I want to um, thank Mustang as well for coming on because yeah. it, it was short notice. So we appreciate you coming down yeah. and joining the show. It was a good conversation. And um, I thank everybody for the comments yeah. and stuff. And, you know, we'll have this on YouTube, Yep. on our YouTube channel. So check us out on YouTube. Check us out on Facebook. Twitter. Absolutely. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Instagram, all over. All over. The best P ever. It is. <laughs> <laughs> and so, okay. The best one P is after you come. It's true. It really <laughs> is. We are, Revolutionary Health is the Paz Award winner for best video, video series, series because of all of you. Thank you. Thank for you. Your votes, Thank, Thank you for your, for your votes. votes. Uh, we are super excited and um, just eternally grateful. So um, we have a lot of new stuff on our website. Um, so you can visit thecounternarrative.org um, where you can catch all of our um, information on the Reckoning blog where we have some amazing new content. Mm -hmm. um, so just thank you so much for joining us this evening. Follow us here on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at Building Desire. Follow us on Instagram at The Counter Narrative. And Follow our, subscribe to our YouTube page. And one thing I was actually going to ask for Mustang, where can Korea. people find you? Because you're also a licensed massage, massage therapist. Yes. And you also have other things on social media. So tell the audience like where they can find you, where they can access services, stuff like yeah. that. Um, Instagram is my best friend. So you can find me on Instagram, but it's underscore Mustang. Okay. I only have one page. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> one page. I've had a lot the of rest ain't here. Yeah, a lot, a lot of people created like fake pages and stuff. I only have one page. What's the handle um, again? It's underscore mustard. It's underscore mustard. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Any other areas you want to direct them to? Not for now. Okay. Not okay. for now. Just there. Instagram is good. Okay, perfect. Thank you all so much.
come and check out Beyond for Kevin Hart piece. Oh, yes. Um, so um, we have a piece on our blog, on the Reckoning blog. Uh, thank you so much for mentioning that, Alvin. Um, so a lot of conversation um, about uh, Kevin Hart and um, what happened uh, with everything that happened around him and you know the Oscars hosting last week and some of the trauma. Um, and so we talked about that. Um, and thank you so much for the Brothers of the Counter Narrative for uh, being able to craft um, a statement. I want to send a special shout out to L. Michael Gibson and all the people that were on the call and were involved in crafting this statement. Anyway, you can catch that on the Reckoning blog um, on our um, page at thecounternarrative.org. So thank you all so much for joining us tonight. Please, please stay in touch. We will see you next week and talk to you soon. Bye, y'all.